On Sizzle Ranch, down near Dallas, Texas, lives Elmer Wheeler, one of America's foremost sales trainers. The salesman, salesman, he's called. Hey, what's going on here? Well, Lorenzo, you can say that again. What is going on here? Oh, Sizzle Ranch never saw anything like this before. What's going on? Well, it's a long story. To really tell it, we have to start back in the days when Elmer was a young newspaper man. You see, he took a wise crack. Don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle, and parlayed it into a successful sales philosophy. Discovered the secret of how to make more sales, more friends, get more happiness out of life. Today, he's a word chemist who practiced what he preached and gained financial success and happiness by serving a list of 247 clients that reads like a who's who of American business. His tested selling sentences were checked in the world's first and only word laboratory and used on 28 million people. Out of this experience came the five famous Wheeler points that increased sales, doubled incomes, and brought success and happiness to thousands of salesmen, business executives, and professional people all over the world. So we ask Elmer why he didn't make his master formula, the five Wheeler points, available to everybody by putting them into a movie. Elmer liked the idea, and here we are. Camera, ready. Sound, ready. All right, roll. Hey, Mac. You wouldn't want to buy a couple of tickets to a dance tonight, would you? Quiet, everybody! All right, roll them. Production number 128, scene one, take one. <laughs> people buy. Have you ever made a sale in a hurry and wish the guy she knew the exact words you used on that customer so he could repeat those words and make another customer buy just as fast over here? What makes friends? Have you ever made a friend in a hurry and wish the guy she knew what you said to that fellow so he could repeat those words and have another friend over here? What makes people buy anyway? Well, I think it's the sizzle that makes people buy. It's always been the sizzle. Even back in the days of Rome, it was the sizzle the first Roman merchant used back there to sell his fancy togas to his men customers. He'd hold up a fancy toga, and his only selling sentence was, it'll make you look senatorial. Back in those days, they didn't mind looking like a senator. I was in a store the other day, and while I was in there, a farmer came in to look at some long red underwear. Now, of all the selling sizzles and long red underwear, that was a mighty smart wheeler trained salesman. He boiled his whole sales talk down to one sizzle. He pointed to the underwear, and the only thing he told the farmer was, they won't itch. Now, that salesman knew his merchandising features. He could have told the farmer, for example, that each suit had seven fine ocean pearl buttons up the front that each button was sewn on with 18 loops and four knots. He could have described, for example, all the various mechanical features on the garment, but he didn't bother. He knew that in order to make a fast, quick sale, all he had to say was they won't itch. And brother, if you've ever worn any long-handled underwear, that's all you want to hear too, isn't it? Isn't it everything that's sold, from a swimming pool to a hand organ is a sizzle? So point number one, 
To get yourself that job, that promotion, that sweetheart of that sales order. To get yourself more happiness in the home, more social success or greater business gains. Remember this first great point, which is, don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. It's the sizzle that sells the steak and not the cow. Although the cow is, of course, mighty important. But you never saw a steer walking through a restaurant taking orders for a shank bone, did you? But what happens when a waiter walks through with a steak that sizzles? First you hear the sizzle, then you see the sizzle, then you smell the sizzle. And that sizzle then dealt a triple blow to your emotions. And it was three to one that if you had the money, you'd buy yourself a sizzling steak instead of a 30 cent hamburger that lay in the platter fizzling. Now, I don't know what the sizzles are in your business, and I don't need to know in the next couple of minutes to make you so gall darn sizzle conscious that when you get back to your places of business, you're going to take pads and pencils and mark down the sizzles in your business. You're going to say, brother, I've got to find the sizzle. The sizzle, for example, that makes people buy is this. The sizzle is the tang and the cheese, the crunch and the cracker, and the whiff and the coffee, and the pucker and the pickle. That's what people buy and nothing else. The sizzle is the emotional side of the sale. The steak is the factual side. For example, please help the blind is the usual sign you see. But a blind man I came across the other day had a real selling sizzle. It is spring and I am blind. Business boomed. The blind man knew the pocketbook is closer to the heart than to the brain. Is it a trick? Yes, selling is a trick, but it isn't trickery. The trouble with trickery is you can only use it once, then you have to leave town. High pressure selling is gone today with the cigar, the derby, and the gold-plated fountain pen type of selling. Low pressure selling is here. Sincere selling. Scientific selling. Let's see if we understand the science of the sizzle, Elmer. Permanent wave, eight dollars. <laughs> Cheap price alone fizzled again. Permanent wave, $8, but permanent. <laughs> now there's word magic with a sizzle. In she goes for a permanent permanent. How much money did your father make after he was 60? Why, I've been keeping him up ever since he lost his job at 55. Then, who is going to keep you up after you are 60? I know a firm that will, my insurance company. This insurance salesman lined up his sizzles. He doesn't intend to get caught fizzling. Now that you have your sizzles lined up in the order of what the customer thinks is a sizzle, then you're ready for point number two. Point number two, don't write telegraph. By this I mean, your first 10 words when you face anybody are more important than your next 10,000. In fact, if your first 10 words aren't the right words, brother, you won't have a chance to use the next 10,000 because that customer will float away from you mentally if he doesn't walk away from you physically. So you must learn the art of verbal shorthand. You must learn how to speak telegraphically. You must learn how to put something in front of the other fellow and in 10 words say something so important that he says, hey, can't you tell me the rest of the story? The kind the real Indians wear, Sonny, triple the sales of Indian moccasins. How would you like to cut your shaving time in half, sir? Double the sale of shaving cream. A number of years ago, we took an expression out of the airlines that said safety belt, and we substituted seat belt because it had a far better reaction on the passenger. Now, if I can get the airlines to do one more thing, I'm going to be a happy man. Every once in a while, you know, you see an expression that says emergency exit over certain seats. Here I am, 19,000 feet over the Rocky Mountains, sitting next to an emergency exit. They might just as well call it this way, the heaven exit, or a last chance to insult the airlines. Here is another emergency, selling the Red Cross. This young lady is getting results because she telegraphs her sizzle. Good morning. I'm from the Red Cross. How generous would you be this year? It'll make your little dog's tail wag for more. Good morning, Mr. Jones. Good morning. 
How would you like to have your office 15% cooler? No matter what you are selling, rowboats or zebras, insurance or television sets, whether you're selling just your personality or a service, you must find your sizzle and then put it into a 10-second sales message. Remember, put your sizzle into a telegram. If you'll watch your first 10 words, your first 10 words will always watch out for you. What are you looking at? Well, I just wanted to see if a figure was as cute as yours, dear. Now that you have your sizzles lined up in the order of what the customer thinks is a sizzle, and they're spoken telegraphically, then you're ready for point number three. Say it with flowers. By this I mean, it's as much what you do in front of people as what you say. How you stand, how you look, the expression on your face, your necktie, your hairdo, the way you hold that product or that fountain pen, tells the other fellow as much about you as a million extra words. So you must learn how to synchronize your sizzles with showmanship, how to back up your words with actions and gestures. Never say anything without doing something to prove the point. The refrigerator salesman, who's a fizzler, says, Madam, this refrigerator burns as silent as a match. But what's he do? He starts scratching himself like this. But the sizzler says, And lady, this refrigerator operates as silently as a match. Listen. This frying pan will save you three cents on a meal. The dime store clerk holds a string of beads on her fingers like this and they look like a dime's worth. But the Tiffany salesman holds them against a blue background and they look like a million dollars. So you must learn how to synchronize your sizzles with showmanship, how to back up your words with actions and gestures. And the best gesture of all is nodding the head. Because when my head's going up and down like this, your head wants to go up and down, doesn't it? And when your head's going up and down like this, try to say the word no. You've got to do this to say the word no. Nodding your head up and down is what we call the monkey see, monkey do technique. Now this is why the clever hardware salesman says to the lady, I see you like this new lawnmower, don't you, madam? You like the design. And the green and yellow color will look good in your yard. So I guess you will take it right along with you, won't you? The poor lady's head is going up and down and she can't say no. In fact, two hours later, here is the same woman mowing the lawn and her head is still going up and down. Now that you have your sizzles spoken telegraphically and spiced with showmanship, you're ready for point number four. Don't ask if, ask which. By this I mean, always give people a choice between something and something, never between something and nothing. Be a good lawyer and ask leading questions. But make God darn sure you ask the questions that get the answers you want. Never take a chance and ask a question unless you're sure of the answer. Don't do like this fizzler. Something in TV today, lady? How are you fixed for a good set? I'm fixed fine. How are you fixed? <laughs> Now, which would you prefer, madam, the blonde or the mahogany? Do you want only half or full protection from your policy? Shall we fill this cavity while it's small or wait till it hurts some more? Do you want a $4 inside room or an outside $6 room overlooking the YWCA? That's going too far. But always remember to give people a choice between something and something, never between something and nothing. Now, a lot of people have asked me, Elmer, are there such things as signature sizzles? 
Well, here's some good examples of the right and wrong way to get the signature on the dotted line. Sign here. Put your moniker right here. Here's the place for your John Hancock. <laughs> If you'll place your approval here, sir, I can have it okayed and on its way by tomorrow. This man sizzled, the others fizzled. Now, a lot of people have asked me, Elmer, do you have such things as price sizzles, how to quote price? Well, here are some good examples of the right and the wrong way to quote price, especially high prices. <laughs> and here's the bad news. It costs ten bucks. That'll be five smackers. It won't cost you a penny. It'll save you money. It's only four hundred and fifty dollars, and look what you get. An F2 lens. The first three fizzled, and the last two sizzled. How? Why, they got the customer's mind off of price in a hurry. Never pause after you quote the price. Keep right on talking. In fact, the faster you talk, the better off it's going to be. Say, Elmer, does this sizzle stuff work socially? You know, will it help a fella get out of the house at night for a game of cards with the boys? Will it work socially? Of course it'll work socially. For example, Never call the wife up and say, darling, what are you going to do tonight? Can I get out of the house to play poker with the boys? And have her say, what? And have me stay home alone again next. Use a little sizzle. Call her up and say, darling, which night this week don't you mind staying home alone? Tuesday or Wednesday? Whatever the answer, you're still the winner. Point number five now to get yourself that job, that promotion, that sweetheart, or that sales order. To get yourself more happiness in the home, more social success, or greater business gains, remember this fifth point. Because without this fifth one, these other four won't work. This fifth one is the keynote to make these other four work. And that fifth point is, watch your bark. By this I mean, it's as much how you say, what you say. The little dog has only one word and one little tail to wag, but it's the tone behind his woof, and it's the way he wags that little tail that sells you anything he wants to sell you. When his little tail wags like that, he's friendly. When it wags like that, beware. So watch out how you say what you say. And when you smile at people today, smile sincerely. Don't give them that old mechanical smile, but smile sincerely. Give them a smile that bows from the hips down. Remember, the Cigar Star Indian never sold a cigar. All that the Cigar Star Indian never did was attract you into the place of business where a bright young fellow with a good morning on his smile sold you a two for a quarter cigar instead of a nickel weed when he said these bearings won't unravel in the mouth while smoking, sir. Because it's the sizzle that sells the steak and not the cow. The best sizzle in the world, dressed up telegraphically with bouquets of action and plenty of which what we're winning how will flop in the sun if the voice is flat. So don't be a Johnny One Note. Talk high, talk low, talk fast, talk slow. Make your voice as interesting as whatever you have to put over to people because it's as much how you say what you say. And there you have it, the story of the sizzle straight from the head sizzler Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <coughs> Getting back to selling the sizzle. The cameras are ready to roll, and here's Elmer. Production number 128, scene 107, take one. Now, if you were to ask me to boil this whole story of the sizzle down into one little sentence, here it is. Don't think so much about what you want to say as what the other person wants to hear. How? By these five points. And here they are again very slowly so you remember them all your life. First, don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. Two, don't write telegraph. Three, say it with flowers. Four, don't ask if, ask which. And five, 
Watch your bark. Uh, yes. Oh, Elmer. You like dancing, don't you? Then you'd like to help the musicians' union, wouldn't you, Elmer? How many tickets do you want to their dance Saturday night? Two or four? Oh, two or enough, two or enough. I sure sizzled Elmer, didn't I? Wait a minute. This isn't the end. This is just the beginning. What you fellows want to know now is how these five wheeler points can work for you, don't you? So let's take a product such as a Dumont television receiver. Let's turn the clock back to Dave Rogers. He's been using these five wheeler points for a week. I understand he's clicking with them. Let's see how he's sizzling. My name is Rogers, and yours? Uh, Morgan. How are you, Mr. Morgan? Just fine, thank you. I thought I'd like to see something in a television set. Well, Mr. Morgan, if you were a millionaire, you couldn't own a finer set than the one I'd like to show you. What set is that? Why, Dumont, of course. The Cadillac of television. Because only Dumont can give you the complete range of picture tones from the blackest black to the whitest whites. There's a real sizzler for you. He knows that a good approach is a sale well underway. He gave the prospect a million dollar smile and a hearty handshake. He sold him by putting him in the millionaire class. He made Dumont quality as desirable as a Cadillac. In one telegraphic sentence, he told him why Dumont has the best picture. He didn't bore the customer with what he wanted to say. He told Morgan what Morgan wanted to hear. That's Wheeler point number one. Don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. Then he boiled his sizzles into one 10-second selling sentence. That's Wheeler point number two. Don't write telegraph. Hey, look, here comes Wheeler point number three. Say it with flowers. When you turn the Dumont teleset on, the picture automatically comes into focus. Steady, sharp, and clear. Here, try it yourself. Hey, this guy's out sizzling me. He not only backs up his sizzle with sizzlemanship, he brought the customer into the act. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture, all right. How much is this set? Oh, here's where we separate the sizzlers from the fizzlers. Wow. That's too much. I couldn't afford that. How much is a set like that? Now, there you are. Just what I expected. If this sizzle stuff is so hot, why didn't Roger sell in the higher price set? We get together like this and we yak, 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 but we still run into the same old song day after day. I like the picture. The cabinet work is beautiful. I can't afford that much. Wait a I... minute. Let's let Elmer finish what he's starting to show us. Take it easy, Tom. He only used one set. He didn't use Wheeler point number four. Don't ask if, ask which. Always give the other fellow, remember, a choice between something and something, never between something and nothing. For example, what he should have said was, do you want a blonde or a brunette? I mean, do you want a blonde or mahogany, 17 or 21 inch set, table or console? But say, Don, what am I doing running your sales meeting? Suppose you take over. Right, Elmer. We'll tune you out and get down to business. Okay, Don. If you need any help, you know where to get me. Now, fellas, you have seen in the movie today what Elmer's five wheeler points are. And by now, I'm sure you're beginning to understand how they have helped increase the sales of over 250 of America's leading corporations. But before we consider the wheeler points, and how they can help you sell Dumont Telesets, 
Let's consider your approach to a prospect. Do you remember how Rogers did it? Sure, he shook hands with the customer. Right, but that's not all. Then he introduced himself. Right, but he did more than that. First, he gave the customer a big smile and shook his hand. And then he introduced himself and asked for the customer's name. And then, after the ice was broken, Dave followed up by saying, Mr. Morgan, if, if you were a millionaire, you could own no finer set than the one I'd like to show you. That's it. Those all-important first ten words. We call it the millionaire approach. Million-dollar smile, million-dollar handshake, and a sizzle that puts your prospect in the millionaire class. Now that we have the sale underway, let's consider Wheeler Point number one. Don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. Remember, the sizzle is the emotional side of what you sell. It's the tang and the cheese, the crunch and the cracker, the whiff and the coffee, and the pucker and the pickle. Okay, let's hear you fellas come up with some red hot sizzles. Well, how about telling the customer Dr. Dumas pioneered in the design and development of the first practical picture tube. That's good. Uh, what about this? With a Dumont, you, you have the best picture in the neighborhood. Now you're sizzling. Could we say that Dumont has three-quarter inch wood cabinet? I'm afraid that's the steak, not the sizzle. It's factual and not emotional. But you fellows are beginning to get the sizzle idea. Now let's go on to Wheeler Point number two. Don't write telegraph. When you find your sizzles, put them into 10 second selling messages. Remember, your first 10 words are more important than your next 10,000. I get it. When Roger says that Dumont is the Cadillac of television, he's telegraphing his sizzle. Exactly. When you get your sizzles all lined up in the order of their importance, you boil them down into 10 second telegraphic messages. And then you're ready for Wheeler point number three. Say it with flowers. Now, Mac, you said something a while ago that fizzled because it was factual instead of emotional. Now, using Wheeler point number three, let's see if you can make a sizzle out of a fizzle. It's as much what you do in a sale as what you say. You've got to back up your sizzles with showmanship. I've got it. You could knock on a cabinet with your knuckles like this and say, this cabinet has a fine custom crafted furniture sound because it's made of three quarter inch wood. That's the idea. Now you have a real sizzle and you backed it up with showmanship. Uh, when we tell a customer that the doors will stay put in any position, how about uh, tilting the set to prove it? Good, you fellows are beginning to get the idea. Now, Tom, remembering Wheeler point number four, if you had been in Roger's shoes, how would you apply the which technique? Always give people a choice between something and something, never between something and nothing. Well, like Elmer said, uh, I'd minimize price and get right into something like, we can send the set out this afternoon, or would tomorrow morning be more convenient? Which do you prefer? Now you've got it. What about, wouldn't you prefer the big 21-inch screen model over the smaller 17? Uh, say, uh, how about, uh, does the French provincial or the modern styling suit your home best? Uh, which do you prefer, the open-faced or this closed-door console? <laughs> That's it. That's it, you've got it. Now we're ready for wheeler point number five. Watch your bark. It's as much how you say it as what you say that makes people buy. Don't be a Johnny One Note. Talk high, talk low. Talk fast, talk slow. Remember the cigar store Indian never made a sale. Say, Wheeler Point number five is mighty important in the millionaire approach, right? You bet your life. You're sizzling your way toward a sale when you get next to a prospect. Say, Don, shouldn't we tell them about Dumont factory authorized service? Of course. Tell them that every Dumont teleset is underwriters laboratories approved. 
And don't forget to tell them that Dumont not only makes its own picture tubes, but builds television station equipment for leading broadcasters and operates its own network of 62 television stations. What about all the Dumont extras? I'm glad you mentioned that. Be sure to show them the phono pull-out drawer. Actually show them how the set can be converted into a phono combination for only the low price of a record attachment. Then tell them how little this costs. Mention the puncture-resistant speaker grill, the removable glass front for easy cleaning. Tell them how cooler operation prolongs the life of many vital parts. Now, all of these extras give you plenty of sizzle ammunition with which to clinch a sale. Before we leave, let's call in Elmer and see if he has anything to add. Well, that's it, Sizzlers. Now the rest is up to you. Hey, hey Elmer, Elmer, does it really work? Does it really work? I'll say it does. I've got a card here from a friend of mine. Let me read it to you. Dear Elmer, your five Wheeler points have really made the cash register ring for me. Signed, Jim. Say, his pool is bigger than Elmer's. Yeah, so is his cigar. Why, of course. He's a Dumont dealer. <laughs>